the game we're playing is I have a function f, I have f evaluated at point x0. What I want to know is, is there any way I can get the value of f at a point x near x0? Our first shot at trying to get a handle on this problem is continuity. What continuity tells us, if x is near x0, then f of x will have to be near f of x0. So that's how you estimate using continuity. All right, problem. Remember, if I'm trying to draw the picture of a continuous function, my only rule is that I cannot lift my pen off the paper. So this is gonna allow for a lot of pathological things to happen. For us, it'll be en enough to note, one thing that's gonna be bad is your graph can be jagged. You're allowed to put as many sharp corners as you want into your graph. Another thing is you can give your graph very steep spikes. So when it comes time to estimate, if you're estimating something that's near one of these spikes and you're only using, say, finite points, those spikes are really gonna throw your estimates off. So we wanna to try to upgrade continuity to something else. Okay, so what's our plan? Well, if you notice, what did we do with continuity? The, the business of continuity is trying to find your best fitting point to the graph. So instead of looking at a point, why don't we try to marry a whole line to our graph at a given point? So I wanna go from best fitting point to best fitting line. We're gonna call the best fitting line the tangent line. Sometimes we'll have one, sometimes we won't, but we're gonna see what happens when we assume that there is one. All right, so let's take a look at a picture to try to pull apart what we would need to get a best fitting line. All right, so here's my picture. I have my point x0, I have the graph of my function f, and we draw in our tangent line, so that's just gonna be the point that hugs our graph the best above x0. What do I need to get a line? Well, I need two things for the recipe of a line. I'm either gonna need two points, or I'm gonna need a point and a slope. So how we're gonna proceed is, I'm gonna start with x0 as one of my points, and then we're gonna look at points very close to x0, and then see what's happening on the graph. So we'll have two points. You'll have the point x0, f of x0, and then x, f of x, where x is near x0. If I connect the dots between those two points, we're gonna have what we call a secant line. So picture right here. So like S1 and S2 are gonna be secant lines where we're looking at an X0 and an X. Then what I wanna do with these secant lines, we're gonna let our X get in closer and closer to X0. If that settles on a line, we're gonna call that the tangent line, and then that's what we're gonna use as our best fitting line. Now the problem here is gonna be, we have a point that's gonna be the point at x0, f of x0 for the tangent line, I have to worry about the slope. So how am I gonna get the slope? Well, the idea is I take these secant lines, we're gonna be able to compute the slope since I know how to get the slope off of two points. We're gonna take the limit as I let this x come into x0. If that limit exists, that's what we're gonna call the slope of our tangent line. Let's look at a concrete example. Our function is going to be f of x equal to x squared. Our point's going to be x0 equal to 1. So what we want to do is we want to find the slope of the tangent line at x0 equal to 1. Now, on the x-axis, I'm going to have the points 1 and x, and we're going to let x drive down to 1. So we want to take the limit of x going to 1. Our delta x there is going to be equal to x minus 1. On the y-axis, we're going to have the values of 1 and x under f, so we're gonna have one and x squared, and our delta y is gonna be equal to x squared minus one. If I connect the dots, the slope of that line is gonna be x squared minus one over x minus one. If we take the limit of that, first we're gonna try sticking a one in there. That's gonna give us a zero over zero, so we know we're looking at an indeterminate form, so we'll need to do more work. If I factor out the top, that'll turn to x plus one times x minus one. The x minus ones cancel out, and now I can put our one in, and then we see that the slope is gonna be equal to two. I have everything I need to get the equation of a line, so this is gonna be our tangent line. 
The point is going to be 1, 1. Okay, that's going to be the point on the graph above 1, and our slope is going to be equal to 2. So we write down the equation of our line, y minus y0 equals m, x minus x0, put our numbers in. So our tangent line is going to be y minus 1 equal to 2, x minus 1, and then I can put the 1 on the other side so it's ready to be used when we stick values in. Let's take another look at our limit. So instead of using x going into 1, I'd rather have 1 plus h going into 1 with h going down to 0. This is going to make our life a lot easier because it'll be easier to compute with. Let's see how this changes the picture. So along the x-axis, I'm going to have our points are now 1 and 1 plus h. So our delta x is going to be equal to h. Along the y, okay, our point at 1 stays the same, but now instead of an x squared, I'm going to have 1 plus h squared. So our delta y is going to be equal to 1 plus h squared minus 1. When I take the limit of our gadget that gives the slope of the tangent line, we're looking at limit as h goes to 0 of 1 plus h quantity squared minus 1 over h. If I expand out the top, I'm just going to be left with h squared plus 2h, and then the bottom is just going to be h, so the h divides nice into my top, leaving me with 2 plus h. As h goes to 0, I'm looking at an answer of 2. That agrees with the answer we got before, and note we don't have to deal with division by x minus or x0, or x minus 1. So if we use this business of just taking h going to 0, our life gets a little bit simpler. All right, now back to the original problem. Let's remind ourselves why we care about doing this in the first place. So the idea is I have my point 1, we have our function x squared. Let's say I want to figure out what 1.1 is. Well, let's suppose I don't know much about how x squared works. So the idea would be if I knew it was continuous, my best guess for f of 1.1 is just going to be f of 1. Okay, we know continuity says if 1 and 1.1 are close, then f of 1 and f of 1.1 are also going to be close. So my guess for f of 1.1 using continuity is just going to be 1 squared, which is 1. Okay, that's close, but it's not that great. Let's see how the tangent line gets us a better answer. All right, so what do we have? Well, our equation for the tangent line is going to be, okay, we already did this, y minus 1 equals 2 x minus 1. I push the 1 to the other side, so I'm looking at y equal to 1 plus 2 x minus 1. I want to approximate what's happening at x equal to 1.1, so I put that in there, and what do I get? I get a 1.2. That's really close to our actual answer of 1.21, so we see that this business of using the tangent line. Okay, continuity gets you a decent guess. Using the tangent line gets us an even better guess.